Jesus, Bible, and Current Events from a Christian Perspective, Battling Spiritual Wickedness in High Places, One Podcast at a Time. This is the High Places Podcast. Hello again, everyone. This is Jim. Boy, is there a lot of stuff going on. Wow. Uh, Where to start? Well, uh, there's a lot of election stuff going on. Uh, people jumping into the race, people raising lots of money in uh, real short order. Uh, but first, let's talk about uh, our president. So President Trump, um, I'm sure you've heard in the last uh, week or so, declared a national emergency uh, in order to reallocate funds for the border wall on the southern border. Now, a lot of his supporters and supporters of the border wall uh, quickly um, cheered him on and uh, ran out to support him, but uh, they may not have thought through uh, their enthusiasm. Uh, It's one thing when a president you like uh, takes some extraordinary measures to Uh, implement some things. Um, But once a precedent is set, uh, future presidents can do this uh, as well. Uh, We saw this uh, with, uh, I think it started with George W. Bush. He started to use executive orders uh, a little more than his predecessors. And then President Obama uh, used executive orders a lot. Uh, And then uh, people started talking about the imperial president. Uh, The system we have is supposed to have checks and balances uh, so that uh, one group in the government, uh, one branch of the government, doesn't get too powerful. Congress is actually responsible for spending money. Um, uh, The president, uh, executive branch, they execute uh, the programs and the budget items and the departments that that the Congress votes on. Uh, The people's representatives are supposed to be driving these things. So when you have uh, presidents uh, try to collect more power into that office, you start to have exactly what the founders of this country did not want. They, first of all, did not want a strong uh, central government, uh, and they certainly didn't want a king. Uh, They just fought against those things. That's why the United States is a republic and not a pure democracy. This is why we have the Electoral College. That's why we're, we're the United States, not the United Provinces. Uh, the states are supposed to be independent. The federal government is supposed to be weak. The federal government's powers are clearly delineated in the Constitution, and any uh, powers not specifically given to the federal government are uh, the uh, purview of the states. Um, but power tends to concentrate. And so we've certainly seen that uh, with the federal government ballooning in size, and now we see uh, power concentrating uh, in one office. And so as soon as the president announced this, Democrats were uh, quick to rush out and say, hey, you know what, the next time there's a Democrat uh, president, uh, we're going to declare a national emergency on guns and on climate change. Um, Nancy Pelosi talked about that. There were other uh, Democrats that talked about that. Elizabeth Warren talked about that. So, I mean, you think about that. Um, So that's not just allocating money, that there's things that uh, one can do um, with those national emergency powers. If a precedent gets set with this, uh, they can implement regulations, Uh, they can basically enact laws without Congress uh, under the guise of a national emergency. So what does that mean? Are people going to, if we have a Marxist president, are they going to, under the guise of a a national emergency on guns, want to collect people's guns? How about climate change? Uh, These Marxists believe that, uh, you know, the whole world is in danger because of uh, climate change. 
uh, just parenthetically, because if you want to run the whole world, you have to have a worldwide crisis that you can take control of. Um, but that's another subject. So yeah, at the, hot on the heels of this Green New Deal where the government is uh, basically um, controlling or promising in order to promise and deliver, they have to control housing, jobs, income, transportation, power, all this stuff. So does that get implemented uh, by edict under the guise of national emergency? So that is really... Um, that is a terrifying uh, prospect, actually. Uh, hopefully, it'll get struck down in court. But if if you want, so it's funny because if you read the Bible and the, you read about the times of the tribulation and the um, this world leader, the uh, the beast, uh, he's uh, uh, referred to as the Antichrist, but actually, Antichrist isn't used in Revelation at all. Uh, John, the writer of Revelation did use the term Antichrist, but he used it in his epistles, and it wasn't referring to this world leader. Uh, but that's an aside. Um, so you wonder how an individual can concentrate power like that. Um, and it almost seems unbelievable, because uh, many people in the past have tried. You know, Hitler wanted to rule the world, uh, and Napoleon. Uh, there have been people who have wanted to do this and failed. So the desire has always been there, but, you know, things have stopped that from happening. So you wonder about the mechanism for a global leader uh, like the beast. Um, but you can kind of see how, uh, with this example, I'm not saying that Donald Trump is the Antichrist, um, but you can see how the mechanisms get put in place for someone in the future to use those mechanisms to concentrate power. And so if it works here, you can see it working in other countries as well. We already have, There are already dictators uh, in places around the world, but we usually don't think of uh, dictators in the Western world, the United States, Europe, um, and depending on what your um, eschatology is and whether you believe the beast is going to come out of uh, a revived Roman Empire, i.e. Europe, uh, or, or whatever your uh, uh, impressions are of that, uh, it's interesting to see how easily uh, these mechanisms can be put in place without someone saying, hey, I want to be dictator of the world and tell everybody what to do. It's this, you know, this is under the, um, under the auspices of building a border wall, um, but it's the precedent that's a big deal. So something to uh, watch um, because you can start to connect dots and see how we get from this to what we read about in the Bible with people concentrating power. Uh, on to political news. Uh, lots and lots uh, going on, people jumping into races, people thinking about jumping into races. Good old Joe Biden. He's been uh, leading polls uh, all over the country among uh, Democrats uh, among uh, potential primary goers, um, but he sits out and he doesn't know what he wants to do. I bet he's just kicking himself for not running in 2016 because Joe's got those uh, blue-collar credentials. He probably could have done a good job in Pennsylvania and Michigan and Wisconsin, and um, as close as those races were, uh, boy, uh, makes you wonder. And so Joe probably wonders about that a lot, too. And now he's, uh, he's thinking about whether he's going to jump in. Joe's an old guy, though. Um, and uh, uh, from, from what I understand, campaigning for president is an exhausting thing. So, But it's funny because his numbers in the polls keep dropping because you have all these other Democrats who are already in. And uh, to a person, they, they are just very liberal, um, uh, very Marxist. I think all of them, certainly all the senators, are supporting this uh, Green New Deal thing, uh, which we talked about last time, scary in itself. Um, and so, you know, Joe almost looks like a conservative. Um, and I guess at some of the rallies, because uh, these candidates have been going to New Hampshire already and Iowa, and at some of the rallies for these other candidates, 
People have started chanting, no more old white guys, no more old white guys. Um, and so, yeah, I guess Joe is a old white guy, uh, but that seems kind of ageist, racist, and sexist all rolled into one. I thought the Democrats were against all those things. Hmm. I guess it depends on who you are. Uh, Joe has the misfortune of uh, not being a member of a protected group. And so all the uh, ideological, uh, uh, high-minded uh, rights and privileges and all those things, uh, I guess, don't apply to Joe. Um, and that's, uh, that's uh, educational as well, uh, because Bible-obeying Christians are certainly not in any sort of protected group. Uh, we see that more and more. Uh, Christians are vilified as being closed-minded, ignorant, hateful, bigots, etc., etc., so on and so forth. So it's worth taking note that um, if you think you have rights, and even the people who most vociferously defend those rights, if you're not in a group or you don't have an identity that um, people like, then your rights um, pretty much aren't there. And even the people who claim to be the ones who defend those rights, uh, who virtual, uh, virtue signal <laughs> those rights, and their defense of those things. Um, they're the ones who will chant at rallies, uh, no more old white guys. Um, not that, you know, anybody would vote for someone based on their age or gender or skin color, because that would be, like, bigoted. <laughs> so we'll see how Joe does. Um, but Bernie, uh, Bernie jumped in. Bernie's got the same uh, uh, old white guy problem, but he made a lot of money. I think it was like, what, five million bucks in donations in like the first 24 hours? Wow. So, you know, everybody was saying uh, Bernie's not such an oddity anymore because like everybody else has adopted his policies. All this like uh, socialist Marxist stuff that he was talking about uh, just a couple of years ago that seemed like way too fringe, he's not even the first person in the race uh, touting those things now. Uh, pretty much everybody else that's in the race already, Bernie's late to his own party. Um, and so, but he's making money. So um, somebody must uh, still think he can do things. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes. But uh, as we've uh, discussed before, uh, Bernie Sanders has made it clear that... Um, He's not a fan of Bible-believing Christians and doesn't think that uh, people who believe the Bible and obey the Bible should have government jobs. Um, and he could be the next president. And he could have national emergency powers. And regardless of what people say about your rights, um, if you're in the wrong group, i.e. Bible-obeying Christians. Uh, not only um, don't you have those rights, but there may not be anyone to come to your aid. Certainly not the people who claim to want to do those things. Um, so you can kind of see how these are all tied together. Um, so, yeah. <sighs> it's going to be an interesting campaign. It's going to be interesting to see if any of these... Uh, Marxist policies start dropping by the wayside and the candidates try to move toward the middle or do they think that there really are enough people out there um, to um, yeah that like those policies there probably are in the primaries primaries always uh, tend to bring out uh, the most liberal people on the Democrat side and the most conservative people on the Republican side and then there's always the rush towards the center uh, for a general election. But um, when you're giving away free stuff, 
uh, I don't know, at the center of my life, free stuff. Free college, free job, free housing, free health care. Guaranteed income, whether you want to work or not. I don't know. It'll depend. It'll be, it'll be interesting to see what the economy does. Because if there's a recession going into that election, and people start losing jobs, and people start getting nervous, all of a sudden... Candidates who are telling you the government's going to guarantee you all these things that you're afraid of losing because of the economy, that might sound really, really good. And so there may be just enough uh, independence, uh, and maybe uh, more than just independents, um, who would cross over and vote uh, for the Democrats. And we could have a Marxist president with national emergency powers. But enough of politics. We have uh, plenty of time to talk about that. So the other uh, fun story that's been going around is this, uh, what's his name? Jesse Smollett? I, I probably got his name wrong. Um, he's on television, so um, I have no idea. I don't even own a television. Um, so, turns out... <laughs> um, uh, well, he must be an actor because he follows the script, um, even uh, when he's beaten up uh, as a hate crime. So, uh, what to say about this story? Uh, we uh, we don't need to go into the details of what's uh, you know what was behind this and everything else. Uh, although one funny note: the guys that he paid off to uh, supposedly beat him up, um, he wrote him a check. He, so he's committing fraud and he's going to file a false police report and he writes a check. He left a paper trail. So just because you're on television doesn't mean you're extremely smart. And so the next time a celebrity stands up and espouses some political opinion, um, First of all, remember, they're just entertainers, and they are entitled to their opinion, as everyone else is, but don't think that they somehow have some insight um, that uh, no one else has, and that, uh, you know, you should adopt a certain position just because someone you see on your flat screen TV um, says they like it too, um, because... Uh, they are actors, so they can just pretend about things. My favorite is when the uh, Hollywood types, uh, after you know any of these school shootings or workplace shootings, they, you know, they'll Twitter uh, something or they'll just just this general hand wringing about gun violence, and we need to abscond with law-abiding citizens' guns, um, so that I guess the criminals don't have to worry about getting hurt. Um, it's just funny to hear them uh, espousing uh, more gun control when so many of them work in Hollywood that makes tens of billions of dollars every year glorifying violence. I, it's just it, So hypocrisy is apparently not a big concern. Um, uh, well, yeah, isn't that true? We see that all over. Um, but the interesting thing about this uh, Smollett deal is how quickly everybody was ready to believe this. And this is hot on the heels of that Covington Catholic High School thing where people got burned uh, by a Marxist activist um, making false claims, uh, which is something he had done before, and people getting trashed because, again... They don't belong to the right group. Um, and everybody went for it. And, and they just, even, even their own diocese uh, went for it. And, and now there's lawsuits good for them. What was it, $250 million they're suing the Washington Post, uh, as we talked about before. Um, I don't know if they'll win or not, but now the Washington Post has to uh, keep uh, some of their lawyers busy. And maybe they'll think twice about doing this stuff again. Um, but, I mean, people rushed uh, out uh, and went after that story. And now 
the same thing happened. So they didn't learn anything. And this goes back to the narrative thing. Uh, the media just pushes, pushes, pushes these narratives. And they repeat it so often that people just believe that's the way things are. It's like saying the sky is blue and someone, you know, rushes out on, uh, you know, in front of a camera and says, the sky is blue, the sky is blue. Everybody's like, well, yeah, of course, the sky is blue. We all know that. And so someone comes out and says, you know, racist, racist, blah, blah, blah. Uh, attacking gay people. Blah. Oh, yeah, we know that group does that. So, yeah, I mean, that's not new. So we just assume that. And, you know, who's it? Cory Booker tried to use this to get some legislation passed. And I, I mean, just, and now everybody's trying to backpedal. And they're still, they're like, oh, who's it? Uh, Kamala Harris uh, today said she was sad. She was disappointed. The one thing she didn't say, though, was that she was wrong. <laughs> That's not going to happen. Um, and that people are trying to find excuses. Even some of the pictures on the websites show this guy, you know, looking kind of sad and kind of victim-like. And it's like, this guy slandered a whole race of people. And he was willing to make false claims. So this is like what the Nazis would do with Jews in 1930s Germany. Just try to slander a whole group of people so that the public would hate them. And why? So that the public would be behind doing things to Jews that uh, wouldn't have been done to other citizens, to other groups in the country. And so you see this going on uh, again in this case and with the Covington case, and there was a religious aspect to that one too. And so People have already been so conditioned. Speaking of the Nazis, who is it? Uh, Joseph Goebbels, uh, uh, Hitler's propaganda minister. Uh, he's the one that said, uh, if the lie is big enough and you repeat it often enough, people will believe it. And isn't that true? And now it, it's so believable. These things have been repeated so often that it's almost a reflex. People can't wait to get on Twitter and make a comment on this. Um, especially if they're famous or in a position of power. And so why is this a thing? So beyond this end, you know, you, you could go on for hours and days about race relations in this country and bigotry and blah, 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 and all this other narrative stuff. But really look behind this. The interesting part of this is that it was all a lie. Like the Covington thing was a lie. And yet people were willing to believe that lie. And even when the truth was exposed, they still tried to hang on to the lie. Remember the, the Nathan Phillips guy, the uh, American Indian activist, after this was all discovered, he wanted to go to these kids' school and talk to them about tolerance. <laughs> talk to them about He was going to preach to them about tolerance. When, uh, yeah. Um, he didn't offer to go do that to the um, black Israelite group, though. Uh, they may not have been receptive. Uh, or his own people. It was one of his own guys that said, uh, you know, uh, go he told the kids to go back to Europe where they came from. Um, <laughs> um, but people still hold on to these things. They want the lie to be true so much that even when the facts come out, they would still rather believe the lie. Well, it's interesting because in the future, speaking again of the beast, um, the Bible talks about this in 2 Thessalonians um, verse 9. It's interesting what this says. Even him, talking about the beast, whose coming is after the work of Satan with all power, and signs, and lying wonders, with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. So the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ is what's referred to here, and it is certainly something 
that the world and our culture these days does not want to hear. People don't want to hear that they're sinful because you're not supposed to offend anybody. Safe spaces, trigger warnings. Uh, what's going to trigger someone more than telling them they're going to spend forever in physical conscious torment and punishment? So they don't want to hear that truth, even if the rest of that is that Jesus can save them from that because they like their sin uh, better than being saved from punishment. They just tell themselves the punishment isn't going to happen. And so they're complicit in their own deceit. This goes on in verse 11. And for this cause, so they, because they didn't receive the love of the truth, and for this cause God shall send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie. So, this is kind of going back to Romans 1. If people want sin, if they don't want anything to do with God, if they love their sin more, God will turn them over to their sin. Turn them over to a depraved mind. If that's what they want, then they can go ahead and believe the lies. Uh, and in this case, uh, you know, it's talking about during the tribulation, uh, believing the lies of the beast, uh, the power, the signs, and the lying wonders. They're going to believe all this stuff because they want to believe a lie. Because they hate the truth. They hate the truth of the gospel so much. As this goes on in verse 13, Paul uh, writing to the Thessalonians, But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. So, for those who believe, there is salvation. But for those who don't believe, just going back to verse 12, talking about those who would believe a lie, verse 12 says that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Why didn't they believe the truth? Because they loved unrighteousness. They enjoyed it. They had pleasure in it. And so this is why they're going to fall for these lies. And it, it just it makes you wonder because the Bible's here. People can see this stuff. All these things are laid out. Sometimes you read about the tribulation and, uh, and even, even into the millennial kingdom. And you're like, because people rebel against Jesus uh, if, in, in the millennial kingdom at the end of the millennium. It's like, well, come on. You can't say that you don't believe God exists. Jesus is ruling the world. But it's, it's, it's not about belief. Uh, it's about um, whether or not they love the truth or they love unrighteousness more. And for those who love unrighteousness more, who want to believe the lie, who are bound and determined to believe anything but the truth, they will be damned. But for those who do believe the truth of the gospel, they will be saved, as we saw in verse 13. But you wonder how people can be so blind to these things, but we're seeing it now. Our culture is already conditioned. If they want to believe it, if they want to believe something, and it's been pounded in their head, and it's something they desire, they will believe it right away, even if it sounds a little suspicious. They'll believe it right away, and they'll act on that belief. And even when the truth is exposed, even when they are exposed to the truth, they still try to hold on to the lie. And isn't that it in, in, in a nutshell? People can be exposed to the gospel, but if they love unrighteousness, if that's what fills their heart and what gives them pleasure, rather than the love and the salvation and the grace and the mercy of God through the gift of His Son, Jesus, they'll ignore the truth and they'll continue to embrace the lie and if we wonder how that's even mentally possible, 
uh, you know what, turn on the news. Uh, people believe lies all the time. Um, uh, big lies like these things that, uh, you know, are a concerted effort to um, divide our country and try to get everybody fighting against each other and being suspicious of each other. Uh, and little lies, too. Um, because uh, if the truth is untenable to them, uh, that they need a savior. Uh, and that um, they have to give up their sins. Even if you tell them, hey, God will grant you repentance. You don't think you can turn from your sins? Well, you're right. That's a tough deal. But God is bigger than your sins. God can turn you from your sins. Uh, but most people aren't willing. Um, they have pleasure in unrighteousness. And so that's the thing that struck me about uh, this whole case was the quickness and the willingness that uh, people were uh, ready to believe a lie. And so you can see uh, when it gets to the tribulation, uh, it's not going to be anything for people to believe the lies going on then. And unfortunately, a lot of them are going to be lost. Uh, but God will save some because he's merciful. And praise God for that. I depend on God's mercy every day, um, and I'm very thankful every day that uh, I know where I'm going when this life's over, uh, when all this craziness o is over, um, and it's uh, thanks to my God and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so all those uh, who've been saved uh, through his sacrifice, uh, we have uh, an incredible uh, incredible amount to be thankful for and to praise God for and uh, to see the world as it is and we can see uh, the powers and the principalities behind all these things and what their schemes are lots going on well that's going to do it for this time uh, please feel free to contact us at podcast at jesusforsinners.com and be sure to tell all your friends more and more people seem to be listening. Very good. God is good. Take care, everybody. God bless. Talk to you soon.